If you're using Logic Pro for iPad, especially on an older device, and you're finding the speed and the performance is causing you problems, in this video, I'm gonna share my top 10 tips to help out. Let's go. If you'd like to learn how to use Logic Pro for iPad to create, record, and release your best music, check out the other videos in the playlist below. And a huge shout out to viewer Scott, who actually gave me the idea for this video and shared some of his best tips, which I'll be including in this one. Tip one, close all other apps. To do this here on your iPad, just swipe up from the bottom and then flick away any other apps that are running. This will ensure that all of the processing power and all of the memory is available for Logic Pro. Tip number two is to turn off all your back background apps so that no other apps are using any processing during your Logic Pro session. To do that, we need to jump over to settings. The easiest way is to swipe down, type in the word settings and tap on your settings app. Here in the general tab, go to background app refresh. Now, if there are some apps that you would like to refresh in the background, you can leave them on here. But my recommendation, especially if you're running out of processing power, is to turn all of those off while you're using Logic Pro. You can always jump back in and turn them back on after you're done. Tip three is one that viewer Scott let me know about. And that is sometimes if you close out of your project, completely close out of Logic Pro and then reopen Logic Pro and then duplicate your project, it can remove some of those additional cache files and some of those bloated wave files and audio files that make your project so large. Let's show you how. So here's the project I've been working on. If I tap and hold on this one, I can actually tap on duplicate and create a duplicate version of this one. This is also great for things like version control. So if you're making major changes, you've got a backup of your project. If we now open this version two, if you've been working on a project for a while, sometimes you can actually find that the new version has a lot less going on and therefore can make your processing and your speed a whole lot better. Tip number four is to delete any unused tracks. Now you can go through and manually find any tracks that may be blank like this one, or you can use Logic Pro's very cool feature that if you tap on any track header and tap again, you've got this option here, delete unused tracks. If we tap on that one, any track that has no audio or no MIDI data in it that is a blank track will be automatically removed. The other thing you can do is if you find you've got old versions of vocal or guitars or takes of things that you've muted out, you can go back and actually tap on those and delete those tracks and make sure that you've only got the tracks you need in there. Your tracks and your projects are not bloated and your processing is going to be a lot better. Tip number five is our IO buffer settings or input output buffer settings. To get to these, tap in the top right corner, tap on settings, and then under the audio tab here, you'll notice that we've got this one, the IO buffer. Now, the simplest way to explain this is you want Got this low when you're recording and higher when you're mixing because this is how many in samples can be played at the same time within your project. So when you're recording, you don't really need the greatest quality. You don't need to make sure all of your other tracks are playing back perfectly. You can make that low. When you're mixing, however, you want to hear the full resolution, the full quality of every single sample that's playing. So you want that high and that's going to make sure that you're going to get less latency when you're recording, less sort of clicks and pops and audio artifacts. But then when you're actually mixing, you're gonna get the best quality sound. So 64 or 128 when you're recording, 256 or 512 when you're mixing. Tip number six is related to the previous one and it's low latency monitoring mode. The easiest way to use this is to tap in the top right, this time go to customize control bar and here under modes, we wanna tap this one on low latency monitoring. And what you'll notice is we've got a new little icon here on our control bar. If we tap on that one, it's going to turn orange this is turning on low latency monitoring mode, meaning that when we're recording, we're going to get less latency or lag or delay when we're recording. It does some things behind the scenes to make sure that our recording is effective and we don't get any artifacts, clicks, pops, latency, all that sort of stuff. So when you're recording, it's a good idea to have this on your toolbar. You can have it off when you're mixing, but turn it on when you're recording and you'll get much better performance. Tip number seven is related specifically to our session players. Now the session players work great on an iPad with M1 or later. They work okay on your older iPads, but as soon as you start layering up more than one, two or three or four of these, you can start getting some lag and some performance processing issues. A way around this is to actually convert these to MIDI tracks. So once we actually have 
a session player track like this. What you can do is if you want to convert the whole thing to MIDI is tap over here on the icon. It's going to highlight all of those. We can then just tap in one of these, tap again, and down the bottom here, we've got convert. Now we can go to a pattern region, but I like converting these to a MIDI region. If we tap on that one, you can see here that we've now got this as a green MIDI region. The beauty of this is that now if we go to the edit mode, it's going to be our MIDI notes that we can edit here. And the difference is there's a lot less processing involved for Logic Pro to play back MIDI notes compared to actually controlling a session player and doing all of the on-the-fly adjustments that the session player needs. Now, you will notice here that we've still got the session player kind of layout and structure here. So if you want to make sure that all of that is stripped out and you're just using the player, the best way to do that is to add a new track. So we'll come up here, we'll add a new track, add a MIDI track by tapping on the big MIDI button there. This is going to create a blank MIDI track just there below. Now, what we can do is actually copy or just drag down all of this MIDI notes data into this new track. So let's simply grab these tracks, we'll tap and we'll drag these down onto our new track. So just drag all these down here. Now we do want to change this back to our studio bases. So to do that, we go to our plugins. It's got the E piano there. We just go to our edit mode by tapping in the edit button and removing that one. We can now add back in our instrument, any other effects that we want and any other processing. So if we just come in here, we want our studio instruments, this one here, studio bass, and that will add our bass back in. And now we can adjust that. So we've got the benefit of having the session player create the part, but then we've moved it to a MIDI track, which is going to save a heap of overhead and make your speed and performance much better. Tip number eight is to ensure that auto freeze is enabled. To do this, we once again go up to the top right, go to our settings, and here under app settings and audio, we want to tap on general. Yes, it's kind of hidden in here and turn on this one, auto freeze. So what this does is it uses the freeze mode, which makes sure that it's not processing all the different plugins and effects. What it's essentially doing is creating a WAV file and playing back those. So anything that you're not actively using or changing the plugin for at the time is going to play back as an audio file. This reduces the amount of processing power dramatically and can make your performance much better when using Logic Pro. But what actually is freeze and can you choose to do it manually? You can, and we're gonna cover that in the next tip. Tip nine, if you'd like to control which tracks you're freezing, you can do that. To do it, we need to first add it to our track headers. So we're going to tap on the three dots here and go to customize track header. Under this one, we can add and remove the different options. I'm going to add in freeze. And when we tap out, you'll see that we have this icon here now. So if I want to make sure that I've got my session players down, I don't want to convert them to MIDI because I may want to change them. All I can do here is freeze these. So it means I'm not going to do anything with these. They're going to be bounced down to an audio file in the background. Logic Pro manages all of that. And then I can record my other tracks here, my vocals, my guitars, whatever I want without the additional processing of these having to process every time, because I know I'm not going to want to tweak anything, change any plugins or do anything with those tracks. So freeze is great, whether you use the auto or the manual mode here in Logic Pro. And finally, tip number 10 is something that's related to something I used in GarageBand iOS all the time. It was called merge over there here in Logic Pro it's called bounce in place. So if you've got a track here, such as this piano, fairly complicated piano track that's using the session player, we can convert this to an audio file. And to do that, we need to use the bounce in place. To do that, we select the track, we tap, tap again, and you'll notice here we've got bounce and join. So what we can actually do is bounce this in place. If we tap on that one, what it's going to do is give us all of these options. And it's going to actually create, in this case, a new track. It's going to mute our original original source. We can choose whether we want to include the effect plugins or not. If we're going to use this, I reckon put your plugins in there. It just means that everything's going to be baked in there. And we can even choose whether we normalize the volume on or off. I generally turn that off just because I want the volume to stay as it was set on my original track. If we hit the bounce button, let's see what happens. It tells me I'm frozen. Yeah. So I wanted to do that on purpose. Sure. To show you that you can't bounce an already frozen track. So let's try this again. Again, we're going to tap, tap again, go to bounce and join, bounce in place, set all those same settings. And this time, let's try it again. You will see it'll go through and process this. What it's basically doing is exporting just this. It's soloing and exporting this track. And then it's going to replace this session player with an audio file of that track.
And there you go. You can see here's our original track all muted out and it's actually created this. And if we tap on this one and go into our editor, you'll see that instead of it being our session player, it is now an audio file. So we don't have any options there. We can't adjust or change any plugins because there's nothing on here. It's literally just an audio track with nothing else there. So if you are 100% sure and you just want to bounce some of your tracks down, this is great for backing vocals if you've got something like that that you don't want to spend spend any processing on but you know you're not going to change them, the bounce in place can actually really help out when it comes to your speed and performance. Thanks again to Scott for the video idea and some of these suggestions. And if you've got your own suggestions for improving the speed and performance here in Logic Pro for iPad, I'd love to hear from you. Drop those down in the comments below and who knows, maybe there's a part two around the corner. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.